if you don't want to have fun, I mean, if, when you want to have fun, come on in here. <laughs> Stay here. Hi, my name is Donna Landry Railing. We're going to begin this morning with acknowledging the land base that we all enjoy in the towns of Eureka, Riedel, Fortuna, Ferndale, Arcata, McKinleyville, Fieldbrook. These are all ancestral Wiat lands. We acknowledge that each Sunday morning. As we gather here today, we honor the lands and the peoples that came before us. We acknowledge the land on which we gather, virtually and in person. The Wiat name for Eureka is Ture Chichi, meaning where you sit and rest. As this place, this piece of land between the South Bay, known as Wichi in Wiat, and the Mad River, where Wiat people en route via canoe to the Mad River would rest. They would rest in this spot of land along the bay. In Nor I'm Norelma Quintu, and in the Norelma Quintu language, I offer this prayer. All of us, Ka'achepet, your Nichi is calling, Niabieda, hear my prayers. So while Ka'achepet, Awira Bia, humbly, all of us, Sawal Ka'achepet, your children are calling. We are calling. Hear our prayers, Spirit Giver. All of your children seek renewal. The sea people, the land people, the sky people, the water people, and all of your creations. Renew our spirit, Ka'achepet. Make us whole again. We honor the Wiat peoples, all my relations, a hope. Now I invite Scott. Is Scott on podium today? Yes. Welcome, Scott. Thank you, Donna. Oh. Thank you, Donna. That is absolutely wonderful. And wow, what a rousing rock and roll introduction today. My God. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living. I'll be your host for the next couple of seconds. Uh, well, next couple of minutes, being honest. What we'd like to first do is... <laughs> uh, is get a slide that reminds me of the Monty Python with the coconuts. <laughs> Are you saying coconuts are migratory? Um, okay, uh, let's get the slide up on the screen. Oh, we're having some internet issues, aren't we? Yeah, so there we go. Uh, welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living. What we'd like is everybody to turn to the slide, or at least read what's on the slide, and say together the top part of the slide, and then the bottom part, you will turn to somebody else and say that. Say it with enthusiasm and honesty and really welcome somebody. So with that, we say we are a welcoming community where the vibration of love lifts us, the wisdom of the ages inspires us, and the science of mind teaching empowers us. Turn to somebody else and say, I honor, somebody is here. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's take a look at our weekly schedule. Uh, we'll put that up on the screen, please. There we go. There's the weekly schedule. Um, now you've all seen it. Let's move forward. Uh, speaking of one of the things, one of the events on the weekly schedule uh, is Yoga with Kathy Goodman. Um, and that is now Mondays, apparently, um, at noon. And Thursdays from 11 to noon. Is Kathy here? Yes. Yeah. She is. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for doing that, Kathy. Okay. And is this our regular schedule now, or is this just a... Until Thursday the 6th. Until Thursday the 6th. Okay. And then you have to be away the rest of the month? Right. Yeah. So and then you have to be away for the rest of the month? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so just cancel the trip. Um, <laughs> It's such an easy solution. I don't see why this presents a problem. Uh, Karen will be, is it restarting or is this the first time we're doing the first Wednesday healing service? Second time for the first Wednesday healing service. Did you want to mention what that was since we don't have Zoomers right now? Uh, come on up, please.
So the healing service comes out of the Sacred Days work, and it's one of the most powerful ways that I have found in my own life to be able to really reveal those subconscious things that may be blocking my ability to move forward and manifest greater abundance, greater love, greater joy, all of those God qualities that we love so much in our lives. So this is something that I wanted to bring here to our center. I invite you to come and join me. We'll do an hour and a half. I'll lead you through a, um, a guided meditation where you can really come up with what that, that issue is and then build a prayer around it that you can use to begin to unravel that and change your thinking. I'm offering it for a love offering. The suggested love offering is $30 per per healing service, but I want everybody to come. So if you can pay more, pay more. If you can pay less, pay less. Play what you can, but let this be a gift to yourself. I hope you all join me. I'll see you on Zoom. Thank you, Karen. It sounds absolutely delightful. I have this little rehearsal thing going, um, but otherwise I'd like to be there. Cancel it. Cancel it. <laughs> Well played. You did that beautifully. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the uh, celebration of life on a serious note, uh, a loving note. Uh, Ty Klingle, who left us last year, uh, who did the best hugs in the world, and I consider myself a connoisseur of hugs. Um, she was, there's so much about Ty. Uh, was delightful, and she is so missed, and we will celebrate her life February 11th uh, at 11 a.m. Um, if you knew Ty, by all means be there. If you did not have the opportunity to know Ty, be there and celebrate in her spirit. Um, it will be absolutely wonderful. I do want to mention, however, that um, we are helping the family with this uh, event, and it's a so you can see it says potluck reception to follow. So we appreciate everybody bringing along. And will that be here? Yes. Okay, that will be here. Um, changing gears to that's February 11th at 11 a.m. And that happens to be Ty's birthday. Oh, okay. 11 <laughs> to 11 at 11. Okay. Uh, let's move to the next slide. Uh, really excited to announce this uh, somewhere between the combination. No, oh, I thought we did that. Okay, that's not on here. Oh. Okay, so you would you like to talk about a celebration of love on February 12th? All right. If any, we've done this once before, and Donna and Brian <coughs> took advantage of it. If anybody would like to mute <coughs> their vows to their significant other, please talk to me, and we will do it during the service. <laughs> it's great fun. Okay, let's see what slide comes up next. Ah, there we go. That was the one I was waiting for. So, very excited and terrified to announce this <laughs> because it's, we can't go back now. So I'd like you to imagine a world where a mafia-style gang boss is upset that his daughter, who is a spoon, has run away with, cut with, a, with dishware. I would like you to picture the big bad wolf in therapy because he's misunderstood for eating that one person. Uh, and he's really a nice guy. And he's trying to prove it. And Jack from the Beanstalk being interrogated because of the death of a giant and the theft of a golden egg. And you will start to get a glimpse into the world that you will visit if you come to see our play uh, written by my sister who's sitting in the back row. Um, who is also directing with me this play. She and I will both be in it. Um, and we have a special Eureka Center for Spiritual Living night. It will be opening night, February 17th. Uh, reduced ticket prices. It will be wild. It is a performance you will... <laughs> wow. Uh, my sister and I stay up to 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning going, what are we doing? Um, <laughs> so please come and share in our fun, in our abject terror. Uh, I believe uh, somebody will be setting up dinner beforehand. That's usually what happens. Um, I will not be yeah, for the dinner. Brian, have a seat over here for those of you who want to come with two columns. One is play, one is dinner. So. And it, it's fun. It's a fast-moving one-act play. Lasts about, you know, probably about 75 to 90 minutes. 
um, but it will inspire you, it will make you laugh, uh, there's some poignant scenes in it, um, and we would love to have you. That will be opening night. Yes, Anna. Did she say dinner also? There's, there's a sign-up sheet if a bunch of you would like to. We, we do not provide dinner, please do not, under, <laughs> please do not misconstrue, but a group of people when we do this usually get together, have dinner, and then all meet at the, at the play. Okay. And it's at the North Coast Repertory Theater on the corner of 5th and D. Same block as Starbucks, but the other side of the block. Would love to have you absolutely fill the house um, and have a rousing good time. Okay, um, Art with Louise, rock painting. Uh, Lu yes. I'm sorry, uh, Louise, did you want to say anything, or should we just let that stand for itself? Uh, it's speaking. I didn't speak to the mic. Give yourself some rocks if you want to join us. <laughs> Okay. Our bookstore does have books for sale. That's in the other room. I believe Michelle will help you if you would like to buy a book. Little Pantry needs to be fed. Uh, we serve our local community by providing food of uh, various sorts, non-perishable, please. Uh, donate to our little pantry. It goes really quickly. Um, on Mondays, Walk and Awe will be here to help stock, 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 stock. Uh, fill the little pantry. Um, yes, I'm so, Heidi. They're, they're going to get one of those canes and pull me off any second. That's fine, too. Yeah, if you can fit it in there, that's wonderful. Um, and I think that's it for the announcements. Let's move forward to this Bird month's... Watching. What? Bird watching. Okay. Don't bird watching. There's nothing in here telling me about bird watching. So if somebody wants... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bird brain, you know. <laughs> well, this is not anything official for the center, but you're all welcome on Wednesday, uh, the first Wednesday of every month, Wednesday the 1st of February, 9 to 11. I'm leading a walk over at the National Wildlife Refuge. If you don't know where that is, it's off of Hookton Road, kind of across from CR, and we'll just go birding. So please join me. Thanks for that tweet. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll send you a bill for that joke. All right. It, it always seems bad to do puns when Jeff and Rick are in the room because none of us can compete with Jeff and Rick, but they're keeping silent, giving us the spotlight. It looks like Google might, it looks like the internet might be back up. So hopefully the Zoomers have joined us again. Uh, Zoomers, welcome. And let's, speaking of welcoming, I, it's over there back up. I see Google. Uh, no, I, I lied. Okay. All righty. Oh, okay. <laughs> so since the Zoomers can't hear us, let's talk about them. Um, all right. Our theme for the month is, for the last time uh, for this month, is walking our talk and our contemplative meditation, bringing this back down to a serious level, um, is going to be conducted by Les, wherever you are. Les, over there. I was asked to do a contemplative about gratitude. And so um, I thought I would uh, use um, Reverend uh, Z and Reverend Melissa's uh, book. But I looked at it, and it's about gratitude, but it's not at all meditative. So I chose another favorite author of mine. This is from Reverend Angelica's book. It is not the entry for this day of the year, but it is definitely about gratitude. 
recognizing the creative principle that is alive, awake, and aware, in, through, and as me, I now celebrate all that I am grateful for. I honor the source of all I experience with my senses and more. I acknowledge all the blessings I have, the people, pets, plants, and all living things. I am grateful for how my body works, for my organs that work continually without my having to do anything, for my muscles and bones and blood. I am grateful for my thoughts, my feelings, and the creative process that uses them to co-create my world. I am grateful for my life. Knowing that my attitude blesses me and others, I now release these words, feeling good, and so it is. presence and the power. With gratitude that we are together. And let us all know that what we hear today from Karen and the energy we feel through each other shall empower us and inspire us for the rest of the week and for all of our lives wherever we go and spread out into the world as we see it. I release this word into the law of mind knowing that it is so and so it is. Thank you, 
Jackson. Thank you and bless you all. And now I'd like to welcome Karen. breaking all of the Toastmasters rules right off the bat, leaving the podium empty there for a moment. Well, it is such a joy to once again join you all here and be on the podium. I know that in CSL centers around the globe in January, we always go back to the basics. And so I started to think about that this year of why do we do this every year? And what I thought was there's really three really good reasons for that. One, it's really helpful for new people who haven't been here before, who haven't had an opportunity yet to take classes, that it starts to outline those things that we believe. Next is this book, the textbook of the science of mind from our founder, Ernest Holmes. I remember when I was brand new and I opened this book, and I'm like, OK, I'm reading the passage, and there's some really great stuff. And I got to the end of it and I thought, what was that that I just read? <laughs> <laughs> it's not the easiest book to read. So it's really helpful when we come here on Sunday mornings and kind of summarize what it is that we found in this book. And the third reason goes to a deeper level. And it's something that really started to work me this year as I looked at this. And I think it gives us this opportunity, and especially if we've been in this practice for a while, to go from the knowing to the knowing. That we really get to embody these teachings. That we can take these four topics and feel it through our entire DNA. And so I'm going to invite you to do that today. And I want to do a little bit of a recap of where we've been before we get into that final part today of how to use it. So we started with the thing itself. What is this thing that we call God? And here in Centers for Spiritual Living, we don't see God as something separate from us or a guy in the sky, that we don't see ourselves as children separate from the divine, but one with it. So then how is it that we're explaining what God is? That God is this energy, this life force, the allness of life itself. How Reverend Angelica worded it is it's the center with no circumference. I really like that image. Since we live on the coast here, I like to think of it as the endless ocean. That God is that ocean where you're out there and you see nothing but the water. And that then within this ocean, each one of us are tiny drops of God. And God within each and every tiny drop of us. And what this means is that we are always submerged in and supported by the divine. And this moves us into the way it works. That the divine is all of those beautiful God qualities that we talk about. So I always get these wrong, so I have a list, so I don't miss all of the major ones. We've got abundance, balance, beauty, freedom, joy, love, order, peace, power, unity, wholeness, and wisdom. And of course, with that, that is like the ultimate buffet table. I mean, we are talking about the Vegas potato, the Vegas potato, oh my gosh, I can't say that word today. The Vegas buffet table that is always open, it never closes, and it never runs out. <laughs> right? And so we have this all good, and it is God's great pleasure to give that to us. It has no other option because it simply is that givingness. The trick is that spirit can make no gift to us that we don't accept. And so it's here that we move into what it does. That our job is to learn to be good receivers. Now, I'm sure there's some football fans out there who are going to tell me that I have missed an opportunity for a really great joke here. 
but what I do know about sports in my my little bit of sports knowledge is to be open you to it all in order to receive the ball you have to be open for the pass the same is true here with being open to that ball of good that sweet spirit is throwing at us all of the time you have to be open and the way that this relationship works this opening for the divine is something called reciprocity and we're not going to dig real deep into that today, but what I want you to know about it is it means that as we open up and give more space for God to provide good, that spirit automatically responds by giving, just like breathing. In that cycle of inhalation and exhalation, there is no choice. We open, we receive. Let that sink in for a moment. How good is that to know? And it's here in what it does that we also were introduced to the concept of the law. And the law is another area that people get tripped up on because what, what is this thing that we're calling the law? And it's actually an aspect of the divine. That it, we call it the law because it's a pattern that we can depend on, just like we depend on scientific laws like gravity. And just like gravity, it's no respecter of persons. Sorry, Lori. I know you had an experience with gravity working in a way that you wouldn't have wanted. But it's a great example of being no respecter of persons. It's going to work the same all of the time, no matter how we are using it. And so in that, we move into today's topic of how to use it. And what we know is that spirit can only work for us by working through us. And so we take all of that information that we've learned, that we've recapped here this morning, and we see that it's our opportunity to co-create our reality with the divine. That truly each thought we think is creative. And I think this is good news and bad news because it's not just our conscious thoughts that are creative, but our subconscious thoughts as well. And so whether we realize it or not, in every step that we take, every thought that we think, we're creating. We're always co-creating. We're in this relationship. We have this partner with us all of the time out picturing our life. But the good news here is that if we change our thinking, we can change our life. You may have heard that somewhere before. And I think this is where we get the nickname a lot that we're a new thought center, that we're new thought. And it's not because what we have to say is something that is new, that we're using ancient wisdom, but that at any moment we can have a new thought and change our entire landscape. And so what our job becomes is to recognize when we are looking at things that may be false facts, things that we've come to believe that may or may not be true. And our founder, Ernest Holmes, says it this way, false facts are neither person, place, nor thing to the one who uncovers it. And once uncovered, it has no place to hide. The illusion, seen and understood, is made negative in the experience of the one who suffered by it. While it's true that wrong conditions exist, they could not remain unless there were someone to experience them. Consequently, the experience must be in consciousness. Change the consciousness and the false condition will disappear. I'm going to say that again because I think that's a really powerful statement. Change your consciousness and the false condition will disappear. 
that's just how it works. How powerful is that to know that this is a process that will 100% work all of the time. What it means is that it doesn't matter what's happened in the past, that we have the opportunity to make that change in our life and create the life that we want to live. Now, when I've mentioned this in classes, I have been met by a little resistance from people who say, but Carrie, you don't understand. I was raised, or I've been through, or I had this experience. And I absolutely want to honor everyone's experiences and what we've been through. And they have for sure created beliefs in our minds. And at the time that they were created, they were there to provide us with a resource. But we get to a point where we have the opportunity to decide if those still serve us. Because what those beliefs can do at times, if they're not true truths, is act like limitations in our mind. My mentor and friend, Reverend Leslie, says a true truth is something that is always true in every situation, no matter what. It's life-affirming, and it doesn't change according to circumstances. So we're back to looking at that list of universal principles that we talked about earlier. These are the true truths. And so we have an opportunity when we're looking at something to go, OK, is this a story that I'm making up? Is this something that I've come to believe because of situations that are happened? Or is this a true truth that I could say is true for absolutely everybody? And then we start to purify our thoughts, to come into alignment with the divine. And in this, we come into a lot of faith and trust. That our job really is to align ourselves through practice with the divine. And so I brought a fun story that I wanted to share with you about my friend Mendel. And Mendel really demonstrates how you can manifest in your life. So Mendel is a tailor, and being a tailor was his sole calling. He feels so fulfilled when he is in that space. And yet he was down to his last $50. And he was really struggling to decide if he should go buy food for his family or buy a sign for his business. And he knew that if he bought the sign, business might come in, but if it didn't, he could really be in a bad place. And so he took this into prayer and contemplation, knowing that he was following what spirit had wanted him to do, but still in that space of concern and really wanting to commune with the divine. <clears throat> and in this space, he said, I don't know what to do. And sweet spirit said, Mendel, don't worry. By the sign, your family will not starve. And so he was still feeling very nervous, but he followed that call and he bought the sign. And business took off. And his family ate very well. And after a time, Mendel got to a place where he realized he couldn't keep up with all of the orders. And so he looked at hiring an assistant tailor to assist him with all of the orders coming in. And again, he worried, can I really afford this? Back into prayer and contemplation, he went, oh, all right, is this the right step? Can I really afford this? And again, sweet spirit said, go ahead, get some help. You'll do okay, I promise. And again, Mendel's business took off beyond his wildest dreams. And the time came where he was looking for a bigger space. And he found the perfect retail space. But the price was really high on that lease. Back in prayer and meditation, he went, should I sign the lease? I'm nervous about the price of this lease. 
Mendel, God said, have I steered you wrong? Everything is going perfectly. Sign the lease. You'll be okay. And so Mendel signed the lease on Fifth Avenue. And the store took off beyond his wildest dreams. He was living his best life. Filled with absolute gratitude, he went back into prayer and contemplation about renaming his store. And he said to Sweet Spirit, what do you think about Yawen and Mendel? And God said, nah, let's go with Lord and Taylor. <laughs> so for those of you who may not be shoppers, <laughs> Lord and Taylor is one of the oldest large department stores with high-end apparel that is across the nation. I just love that story because of all of the prayer and meditation that it talks about. It's a really great, fun way to bring in that this is how it works. This is what we should be doing in our own lives. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, puts it this way. The one who wishes to scientifically work out their problems must daily take the time to meditate and mentally treat the conditions, no matter what the apparent contradiction may be. We should work, not with anxiety, but with expectancy, not with coercion, but with conviction, not through compulsion, but in a state of conscious recognition and receptivity. We don't have to drive or push, but we must accept and believe. How many times in our own lives do we think about, should I do this or should I do that? But we let those beliefs and limitations in our lives get in our way. And in that, it begins to act like this grand pinball game. Did anybody ever play that when they were a kid? You play the pinball and you watch the ball bounce around off of everything? I like to think that that's what's happening. I've grabbed for this pure principle, the principle of love in my life, and then it gets knocked around in my subconscious of all of those limitations that I've built up and all of those false thoughts so that what manifests isn't what I started with, but what I got after it got bumped around. So as we purify those blocks, we allow that to come through in a more pure form so that we're receiving that divine, that we're allowing spirit to work for us by working through us and being that pure place for spirit to show up. And so my challenge for you this week is to remember in everything you do that you have a partner, that you are always co-creating. There is never a time that we're in it alone. We're co-creating with something that is greater than we are, and we can use it for good. And then take that into your daily meditation practice. Even if it's only three minutes, carve out that time. Even if it's time that all you're doing is going, nope, come back to the breath, and you feel yourself running, nope, come back to the breath, and just be. That it's this time in meditation that we're allowing ourselves to plug back in. Just like we plug in our phones to recharge them, we need to recharge ourselves to realign ourselves with the divine so we can be that opening. And then just simply start to pay attention to your thoughts. And what is it that's running in the background? And for this week, let's just pay attention to that. And then find an affirmation that speaks to you that you can say, if those are thoughts that are not ones that you wish to be thinking. 
And so let's go ahead and pull up the affirmation that we have today. And we're going to say this one together. My body, my mind, and spirit work together to create the perfect experience far beyond anything I can imagine. I am perfect in human form. I am so grateful for my health, prosperity, and creativity, and all allows me to do what I wish as I want. Mm. And so let's just take this into prayer. What a gift it is to take this time to remember and remind ourselves of how it works. Knowing that right where we are, sweet spirit is. That right where we are, God is. Because God is all there is. That center with no circumference, all power all good, all God. That in this place of knowing the good, that we know that we are a part of this. Not separate or different from, but one with the divine. That in, as, and through us is that same good. That that which we are seeking for is what we are seeking with. And so it is in this place of knowing that I speak a word for our beloved congregation this day. And I just affirm that right where we are, there is love. That right where we are, spirit is shining brightly. That in each task and each thing that we do, there is this light of the divine moving forward out into the world. That we are each those tiny bright drops of God. Up leveling the vibration of the entire planet. And so I just affirm that as we go through our week this week, that we keep this in our minds, that we remember that we remind ourselves of the power that is God that lives within each one of us. I call it good, I call it God, and I just declare that we are Y-E-S for this, for good, for God. And I am so grateful, so grateful for this teaching, so grateful for each beloved member that is here. And so I just cast these words forth into the law. I let them go and let them be. Knowing that sweet spirit always says, yes, beloved, as you wish. It is already done. And we affirm and know this together by saying together. And so it is. also the musicians for today I really appreciate and I'm grateful for them they make it rock in here yeah. <laughs> welcome all if you're wondering what this little red dot is it says mind your mind <laughs> Thank 
good times, oh, let the power of gratitude fill your soul. You got spirit that's here in the chest. Got the tape, great spirit, get down. Come on and celebrate. No shame, no blame, no need to win or lose. Find the power of peace when we learn to choose. The time is now, so don't you hesitate. So far, eh? Yeah. yeah. The um, oh, the Canadians coming out. You know, lived there for ten years, so yeah. got to pick up a few things, right? I do want to mention that um, you could have had two talks today, because I came in all ready to do a talk and was reminded that uh, Karen and I had made an agreement that she would be doing the fifth <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> so. Um, I don't know where my brain's been lately. <laughs> I guess I should start taking Prevagen or whatever they call it on that. <laughs> but I don't even need to do that because I have the power within and I've been talking to my mind about it can remember everything. It can remember everything. So let us think about the offering that we will be making today. In fact, imagine that you're holding it in your hand if you're not. And just let yourself bless this offering. Each one of us has the power to bless everything. So we bless our offering and we say this affirmation together. I gratefully give from the fullness of my abundance, knowing my gift blesses this center all in it and beyond, and so it is.
are blessed, first by us individually and now by me. And we're blessing them with the conscious awareness that the universe gives abundantly. And so we celebrate these offerings. We celebrate how they enhance our ability to do this work that we're doing, being a light in our greater community. And so we're so grateful for this. And so it is. Who would like to do our, read our statement of inclusion today? Oh, great. (laughs) Community statement of inclusion and affirmation. We, the Eureka and Ukiah Centers of Spiritual Living, are communities that celebrate diversity, foster inclusion, champion inner work, and create space for brave, vulnerable conversations. We are a community that honors the unique emanation of God that each person embodies and advocate with people for human rights and dignity for all. We are communities that bless each other, see sacredness in all life, remain learners and listeners, so we may grow together and understand that oneness is not sameness. Join me in the last verse. We, we know, know our, our beloved, beloved community is revealed more fully when we love each other well. Yes. Thank Amen. you. Thank you, Brian. So thank you everyone for being here this morning. Thanks for our musicians and to Karen and to Les for all that you've added to our service this morning, our celebration. And let's stand and sing this song for the last time. Uh, we'll have a new one for February. So let's, let's do it.